Estancia Morazan is a community of 5,000 nestled high in the mountains of El Salvador. Accessible only by dirt track, which is sometimes impassable in the rainy season, this region saw some of the most brutal fighting during the 12-year civil war, which ended in 1992 with the signing of peace accords. Just down the road is the village of El Mozote, the epicenter of a massacre where nearly 1,000 men, women, and children were murdered in one day in 1981. Covered up for years by the Salvadoran and U.S. governments, the massacre was finally brought to light in 1992 with undeniable evidence when a team of Argentinian forensic anthropologists unearthed the tiny bones of 123 children who were gunned down in one house. Most people living around El Mozote and Estancia fled during the war, living in crowded conditions in refugee camps in Honduras. In the early 1990s, they returned to reclaim their land, their culture, and their community. A few community members, like Don Torno, stood their ground during the war, living in the center of a battlefield for 12 long years. La guerra aquí fue horrible. Que quemaban todo, la casa, ganado, gallinas, todo lo que había en el lugar acá, lo quemaban. His two sons were killed and Don Torno was captured and tortured several times by the Salvadoran army. He took us to the cave where he and his family took refuge during bombing raids. Ten people hid here, sometimes for a week at a time, coming out only at night to make tortillas. Doctors for Global Health was born in Estancia when founding members of the organization were invited by the community to accompany them in their struggle to rebuild their lives. Our first project, Building Health Where the Peace is New, was carried out in partnership with priorities set by community consensus. One of the first priorities was building a bridge over the treacherous river that separates the villages here from the next major town. Over the years, many drowned while trying to cross. The bridge was constructed by the whole community using funds raised by DGH. Although the bridge was the first step to ending Estancia's isolation and provided vital access to hospitals, markets, and the region's only high school, the community remains marginalized. Bueno, para empezar, usted sabe que aquí eh, las casas no son muy eh, adecuadas para, para la vida, para vivir. Entonces no tenemos energía eléctrica, tampoco tenemos agua potable. Bueno, el agua potable es la que está libre de, de, de microorganismos. Entonces nosotros no tenemos un agua apta para tomar. The reality of persistent poverty and the lasting scars from the war years still reverberate through the lives of everyone here. Hay un montón de lisiados de guerra que nosotros le llamamos. Muchos perdieron sus miembros, otros no pueden caminar, eh, otras personas se eh, quedaron también con problemas mentales y hubo problemas en la comunidad. Eh, mucha gente murió, quedaron niños huérfanos que no tenían padres o madres. Salud porque no había salud aquí en estas comunidades. No había letrina, no había agua potable, había muchas enfermedades. Los niños se morían de desnutrición. Había muchos parásitos también. Y también había mucha muerte infantil donde los niños nacían y se morían. O había algunas embarazadas también se morían porque no había atención ninguna clase de, de, de promotor, la unidad de salud y todo eso. 
While poverty and lack of access to health care still plague the community, health promoters trained by DGH volunteers are working to ensure that every child has the opportunity to grow up healthy and strong. Victoria is the youngest of six children and the only girl. Her malnutrition is so severe that she lost much of her hair and her skin started to peel. Her family survives by subsistence farming and by hammock making. Nearly everyone here is skilled at making the intricate hammocks that are a trademark of the region. The hammocks are a small source of cash income, but middlemen control the trade by providing raw materials and then paying less than a dollar a day for labor. Victoria's mother worries that she won't be able to continue school if she doesn't gain strength soon. Last year, she attended the nearby preschool. Next year, she must go to a school about an hour's walk away. To reach it, she will have to cross the Rio Torola during rainy season when the current is strong with only a precarious cable chair to cross. Because of the difficulty and expense involved in going to school, many children leave after the first or second grade. To ensure basic education, the community worked to build and maintain a network of early childhood development centers in each of the villages. Recognizing that education is integral to health, DGH helped build the centers and funds the salaries of the teachers. The kinders prepare children for school, provide nutritious meals, give children comprehensive physical exams, and help build important social skills and cultural identity. Doctors for Global Health also supports a community clinic in the center of Estancia. Volunteers spend a few weeks to several months providing health care and supporting the work of health promoters. The clinic also sees many children like Victoria who are undernourished. A week after our first visit, we go back to check in on Victoria. She seems to be doing better and she may just have enough strength to cross the river when school starts in a month or so. Working together with health promoters, community leaders, and educators, DGH volunteers carry out our mission to improve health and foster other human rights with those most in need, accompanying communities while educating and inspiring others to action. The experience fuels our advocacy here in the United States on behalf of those whose voices are not heard. For both of us, this has been a lifelong dream to do this type of work, and for us this has really reaffirmed our commitment to social justice and to partnering with communities in rural Latin America, specifically here in this project. We are not just doctors. We are students, artists, teachers, persons with a deep concern for the inequities that exist throughout the world. We aren't just about naming problems. We are about actively solving them with the communities. Since our founding in 1995, nearly 100 volunteers have spent time not only in El Salvador, but also in many other communities where DGH has been invited to work. Communities in Nicaragua, Chiapas, Mexico, Guatemala, Peru, and Uganda. I believe as human beings, we are by definition world citizens. We have an amazing opportunity to be a positive force for change. To do this, we need your financial support. The reality of people's lives here and in other poor marginalized communities where DGH works demands our attention, our involvement, and our commitment. Your contribution can have a profound effect and help our sisters, our brothers, our neighbors live a vibrant, dignified life.